So this was the first, it was to give you a first impression on the art of our special guest tonight. And I would like to ask you to give a very well, very warm welcome to our guest tonight, Nemanja Radulovic. Hi. Nemanja, in one of your interviews, I read a very interesting statement. And you said that um, you always in search for the sound of the human voice. So now we are playing the violin. <laughs> Did there something go wrong in your career? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, because I, I, uh, I really like the sound of the human voice. This is our communication, the most natural way how to, you know, how to communicate. And the, with the music, it's also for me natural way. Um, why I choose the violin? Because I felt the most uh, better, you know, with uh, with that instrument. I uh, also play cello or viola or a little bit piano. Not very good, but <laughs> a little bit. Um, but with the violin, I always felt really good. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to find the sound of uh, and colors of the human voice. In the sound of the violin? Yes. Okay. And um, in your in the use, you were called a wunderkind. So I think it's, um, you know, everybody, or everybody knows that, um, that wunderkind has a negative as well as a positive <laughs> connotation as well. And there are many pro and contras about this, um, especially in the contrast, because some say that uh, the development, the personal development of the children is somewhat disturbed by being a wunderkind, being mm. treated as a wunderkind. So how was it with you? What do you think about wunderkind? How, what do you think about being a wunderkind or considered a wunderkind? I think that people need to put the words about something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> also about the, when you play classical music, then we will always say you're a classical musician or if you play rock, you have to be a rock musician. Um, and I don't think so that we always need to put the words, you know. I, I had maybe in the beginning of my career when I was a child, something like Wunderkind, but um, I didn't felt that, uh, you know, the negative mm -hmm. way because um, ah. I had the incredible family. Mm -hmm. I never felt the pressure. I always make music uh, and made music in that uh, time because I always liked to, to play and to enjoy the music and to enjoy the stage and to communicate with, uh, with other partners and, uh, and uh, also audience. And uh, they, that's that no. So I I I I cannot say anything negative about that, you know. And I that's think true. that uh, each person has his own journey, you know, through the life. So um, that's so very good, and we are very yeah. happy that you don't have any <laughs> negative experience about this. Um, so, but you you mentioned the the very early stages of performances. I think you were seven years old when you. I started, uh, I started to play violin when I was seven, and my first concert with the orchestra was seven and a half. Oh. And uh, yeah, so I, I made it. <laughs> I, I don't start, know. I, I started really... at the age of seven and have a first public uh, appearance with seven yes, and a half. Yes, I, I, uh, I see that more like uh, a luck, ah, okay. <laughs> you know. And, and a talent. Uh, something given by nature. Yes, and uh, also meeting different people, different professors, and uh, just enjoying. I, yeah. I am really happy that I found the very early what I really liked. <laughs> <laughs> so then, with the, uh, at the age of 14, you left uh, Serbia and you went to mm. Paris. Yes. And uh, uh, now you are 29 years old. Yes. And um, <laughs> that means half of your half of your life you spend in Serbia, the second half already in France. So how, how much of a Serbian is still in you and how much of a French guy is already in you now? I think it's 50-50, you know. <laughs> it's, um, and not only Serbia or France, uh, I, of course I, I keep my Serbian uh, also traditions and what I um, got through my family and friends 
and uh, in the country, but um, I met wonderful people in France also, but not only in France, uh, around the world. Mm. So, um, you know, there, there are a lot of things in, in this world which are not so nice, you know, like uh, frontiers, like, uh, you know, to, to separate countries and to to ask the visa. I know because I, I needed the visa with my Serbian passport and the day when I got the French passport I didn't change but I didn't need any more my visa right. so yeah, it was sure. it was quite you know not uh, not not nice to other Serbian people and uh, I mean this is the the, the society we are living today mm -hmm. you know uh, but um, I always say when you just go in the plane and you are like uh, 1000 meter already you cannot see the border between countries so <laughs> no need to make the difference between countries and just i think each uh, rencontre uh, meeting with the uh, different people just uh, means a lot to yeah. and a makes your and, uh, yes experience mm. yeah and it's, oh, that's good mm. and um, and you also say that um, oh, i read about them <laughs> this that um, you said that uh, you want to bring classical music to a different audience, to a younger audience, and uh, you want to do this without teaching them kind of musical history and not telling them how to play the violin. So, as far as I know, there have been so many uh, musicians before you who tried to find the way, just to find a new way for a new audience and whatsoever, mm -hmm. and they didn't find some kind of a real everlasting receipt for that. So, what's your particular receipt for that particular Actually, I, I, I don't want this. to to um, to play only for one kind of uh, people you know I, I don't want to to say that uh, I don't want to see older people in, you know in the concert hall I think that we just need to to um, to be a little bit more free as a musician and um, as classical musician and just to open the doors for for all kind of um, audience and once again, not make the difference. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, if you present um, classical music to someone who, who never uh, who never listened to, to classical music, then you, you have to, to find the simple way how to present. And uh, it's very important not to speak like long phrases about your passion, because uh, you if you say the right things with simple words, this is the most powerful. So uh, the music is the same, you know, oh. if, you, if you choose the, the good uh, pieces for, for the beginning, for, 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 for the first time, if uh, the audience is listening for the first time, it will be, uh, it will be also the first contact, so yeah. they will see. Mm. Does that mean that you also go to, to different kind of uh, halls, different kind of concert halls. Well, not only the very traditional halls, you played at the Carnegie Hall, you played South Lille, uh, mm -hmm. you played wherever in the world, but does it mean that to find a new audience and to find a new way of presenting classical music to other audiences, that you go also to unconventional places, let's put it this way? Yes. I, uh, I played uh, also in the metro in Paris ah. when I arrived, you know, uh -huh. and uh, this year I will play again <laughs> in, the the, in the metro in Paris uh, but other, in June. But other than when you arrived? Uh, yes, the, it's, it's different kind. It's for, <laughs> for the concert, for, for the metro company. Yeah. And, um, but it's important just to, to go because um, we have to think also about the, the people who cannot go to, to those concert hall who oh. thinks that they are not ready or they are not dressed oh. well to go to listen for the concert of classical music and I think the, there is no connection, you know, you, you just go to listen and, uh, yeah. and enjoy the music. So uh, with the group Devil Trills, which exists uh, since 10 years now and we are working together, uh, sometimes we are playing in discotheque or places like this and uh, actually younger people who discovered us in the uh, discotheque, they are coming then in Salt Playel or a different uh, concert hall, so it's, it's nice. So this is kind of uh, breaking barriers just uh, to, to present music to in other rooms yes, and other just, places? Yes, just to share the music and our passion, Whatever what we, uh, yes. 
Let's talk about competitions. If one, <laughs> if one reads your biography, and one finds that I think there's hardly any competition you left, you left out. Because I think you, you played so many competitions, and not only you played, mm -hmm. but you, you also gained prizes, you gained awards whatsoever. So also the, the question of competitions is a question of being pro and contra. Because there are so many musicians that say, uh, I think there's no man, no, not, not much use of uh, uh, musical competitions on nowadays. It's better to go out and to play without having this situation of comp competing with somebody else. But uh, you played a lot, you, you received lots of awards, you won so many prizes. So what, what did the competitions you played actually mean to you and what gave them, what, what, what gave you for your career? Hmm. At the beginning, when I started, I started as a child. I think my first competition was when I was eight. It was the possibility to play, you know, for um, and to go out of the country and to 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 play in the different places, you know, to to see how how it's going and working uh, outside uh, outside uh, Serbia. And then um, I uh, prepared the competitions more for the repertoire because. That was the only possibility that you could, if you go until the, the, the finals, you, you could play two different concertos, mm, mm, different mm, sonatas, mm. solo violin repertoire. So it was, you know, during one or two weeks very hard, but uh, yeah, it was kind of a good um, exam actually to, to see in which, how, how, how can you prepare fast the, the repertoire. Uh, but it was not for, for the price. The price doesn't mean anything, really. Uh, doesn't mean if you win the first price that you will make the big career. Big career. Yeah. And, uh, but it's important to meet different professors, your colleagues, your, uh, you know, just for, for the relations and to see uh, what, uh, where you are, you know, if you have to work more. When you, you can discover many, many things because there are really incredible young violinists, mm -hmm. you know, even today. And also why the prize is not uh, important, because each six months there is another competition, you know, <coughs> like big competition, so, uh, yeah, no. It's more or less a question of networking and finding the right, pe right people in the right places. Uh, yes, but uh, I think the most important is uh, repertoire and music. You know, just uh, and you cannot play uh, for the judges. You have to play as you play as mm. usual, yeah. like for the concert, because there are like eleven <laughs> in the jury. <laughs> so yeah, how can you? Uh, they have uh, all different kind of opinion yeah. about your playing. So you cannot choose only one <laughs> to play for one. What, what, so. was, it, what was the compos uh, What was the competition you remember best? Um, From your Maybe the last one, because it was uh, here in uh, Germany, uh -huh. uh, Josef Joachim mm -hmm. in Hanover. And um, I know that two weeks before the competition, I just decided to not make the competition. And then, I, because I was a little bit tired and the, the repertoire was really very huge. I think we had something like five different stages, you mm -hmm. know. And um, I had the problems with my hands and uh, my professor, he said, uh, Oh, if you already prepared, just play. Who cares? If even if you if you just don't pass the, the first <laughs> round, doesn't matter. So um, finally, I did it, and I won that competition. But uh, what was funny? I mean, it's more anecdotic. It's uh, that that day when they gave the results, I turned 18, and it was 18 of October, the day of my birthday, <laughs> and I was sitting on the chair number 18 <laughs> also, so everything was 18. Yeah, that was... But you came uh, in first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> At least not 18. <laughs> <And> yes. <laughs> um, there's another topic I would like to talk about. It's uh, the so-called jump-in syndrome because uh, there are so many so many musicians you know that uh, so many musicians uh, started their international career by jumping in for a colleague remember Montserrat Caballé the uh, famous soprano she jumped in for Marilyn Horn and her, her career suddenly started remember Lang Lang the pianist he's jumped in for another colleague of his and suddenly his international career started you jumped in uh, in 2006 I think mm -hmm. in Paris for Maxim Bengarov and suddenly you're career became a different 
mm. energy, different drive. Um, how, do, how does one feel when you get the phone call saying, hey, you, have to, you have to play tomorrow because this and that uh, cannot play and now it's your chance. And is it really a chance? Because, because of so many, you mentioned yourself, so many young, talented people around. And when, they, when one gets the phone, the phone call and one gets the chance, then this is, you have to take it or otherwise you are, you are out of the game. Oh, it can be the, the, the chance if, if you are waiting only for that, you know, you, you, you never know what can happen, you know. I was not waiting for that phone call. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the phone call just arrived and I, uh, I accepted the concert as any different, uh, I mean, other concert, yeah. you know. I didn't have the pressure okay. or uh, no, no, no. And I, I just remember that I had a wonderful relation with uh, Maestro Chung and the orchestra that day. And um, I just remember the, the feeling on the stage. I remember Maestro who, who closed his eyes and uh, he, he followed uh, me uh, during the music. And this is the, the, the only thing I, I you remember. Tchaikovsky, didn't you? Uh, it was better and better. Uh, okay. Yes. Mm. And, and how long in advance did you get the phone call? A day before. The day before. Oh, at least 24 hours of time yes. just to get mentally prepared for that. Yes, <laughs> rehearsal <laughs> also and the, <laughs> and the concert. I found another quote which, which is very interesting by you. Um, you should have said that uh, you play Bach because um, it makes you be feeling with, with the feet on the ground and being very much down to earth. And you play Mozart because it gives you pleasure and it gives you feelings. So in the, just in the other way around, does it mean, that, or wh why those two? And in the other way around, does it mean that Bach has no feelings and Mozart uh, is not down to earth? Or what? <laughs> um, why those two? Because they, they are just genius uh, and uh, their music speaks so much to me, you know, and uh, I feel so good with, the, with that music. I don't have always to play, but when I listen to Bach and Mozart, I always feel really good. Um, Bach, no, I, I don't think so that Bach doesn't have feelings. Uh, but it's, uh, it's more like, um, you know, kind of meditation for me, just uh -huh. to, like a filter to take everything what I had during the day. And very often I just play one moment of Bach just before a concert, uh -huh. just to keep, uh, you know, my heart uh, beating like normal. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, it makes me feel good. And Mozart, it's um, it's incredible because in the morning I like to play Mozart. It's in the so, morning, uh, yes, it's uh, it's so fresh, it's so uh, it's so simple, it's so uh, full of joy, and uh, yes, it gives me really the the true uh, uh, the true feelings, you know, when I play, when I listen. Yeah, yeah. so that's why. Let's get let's get back once again one step uh, back to to your uh, roots to your family roots. Um, you are Serb, you are from Serbia, mm -hmm. and I think the most prominent uh, cultural person in Germany from Serbia is Emil Kusturica. Um, do you have any connection with him? Is this something you have? You have did you projects work with yes, him? Yes, actually, we we met uh, several years ago. He invited um, me and, and uh, Devil Trills uh, on his music and film festival mm -hmm. in Serbia. And uh, it was incredible. This is the place uh, actually he created. It's wooden city. Wooden uh, city? Yes, everything is the, uh, the wood. And um, actually he's making his movies there. And uh, there are a lot of artists, a lot of different kind of people, and uh, everybody is together, you know, so you can collaborate, you can speak, and uh, it's really amazing. If you have a chance to just go there, <laughs> it's really nice. And, um, yeah, and he's, of course, uh, I'm a big fan of his movies because he, he's so true when he, when he makes his uh, uh, ideas come true, <laughs> actually. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, so I'm very proud of that relation, and uh, on this album Journey East, we uh, he accepted that um, we record um, one song from his movie Life Is a Miracle. Yeah. So uh, yeah, 
Good. Um, I think in your youth, you were just more or less, or your life was dominated by, by the war, and mm. more or less, or you, ex you experienced yes. many things from the war. And uh, with this album you just mentioned, The Journey East, um, this also is in a kind of concentrated form, deals with music from Serbia and music which is around all mm -hmm. those areas. Um, how much is, or how, what does it mean for you to, to play music by Serbian composers in, um, in a music business which is more or less dominated by the Monstre Sacré the, uh, of, of, of the Western European um, uh, musical history? Bach, Mozart, mm -hmm. Beethoven, Brahms, <clears throat> whatever. Once again, uh, you don't make the difference, you know, <laughs> between between the music and uh, I. I only play music which speaks to me and which I believe that I can defend, you know, when I play, and that's it. And uh, of course, if I can make, uh, you know, if I can play somewhere where people didn't listen to that music before, I'm happy. Of course, if I can make discover to someone. But uh, if not, no. I, uh, I do. actually this album. It's um, really the journey from 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 the childhood and pieces which uh, which I liked to play and to listen when I was younger and also today. Um, but uh, everything is connected. There is not only Serbian songs. No. There is also from all Balkans, actually yeah. from Macedonia. Uh, and also to Russia with, uh, with Tchaikovsky, Prokofiev, yeah. uh, Chachaturian. And, yeah. Yeah. Which uh, Chachaturian is <laughs> one of your yes, I favorite love composers. Yes. You think he's one of the best. Yes, because, and uh, he's not the most known composer, yeah. actually, but he's so powerful. Yes, I, I really love you. <laughs> It's a good match. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Mm. <laughs> um, but finally, just... Um, there's one, one, one other question which I think is very interesting. Did you ever think about commission uh, a piece of music to one of the Serbian composers, for instance, just writing it f for you personally? Actually, I work since uh, four or five years with uh, Alexander Sedlar, mm -hmm. um, who made a few arrangements on this album, but uh, he's also an incredible composer. Mm -hmm. And on previous album, Five Seasons, he... Um, He decided, actually, it's four seasons by, uh, by Vivaldi, and uh, he re, uh, composed the fifth season, Spring in Japan. Mm -hmm. And it was dedicated to, to the victims in, um, in Tsunami ah. in 2011. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it is always very nice collaboration with him. He's really amazing and great friend. So we have to expect something very interesting uh, in the future. Yeah, it's good for in sure. In the future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just, Uh, just at the end, just <coughs> one more question. I think this, uh, you mentioned this, this new album, which is Johnny East on Deutsche Grammophone, um, and I think it's, it's the most personal yes. album for you, because mm. it's, it's dedicated to your mother. Yes. So why is it so personal for you? What's the reason behind that? Mm, it's, um, first of all, it's dedicated to my mother. She's not part anymore of this uh, world since few few years and um yeah of course i i loved her so much and uh, not only me and all all my family it's so special uh, to me you know uh, but um i wanted to to dedicate because each piece on the cd is uh, just reminds me of her mm -hmm. and uh, yeah this this is like uh, You know, maybe I I needed to to make this because she's not physically anymore here, and uh, yeah, to put on the album. Mm. I think one, one hears that one one hears the passion and one hears also the the very personal engagement in the music uh, when one listens to to this new album and it's really really great music. And as we saw in the in the trailer from songs my mother taught me, I think it's very touching. And this is the the whole album is a very touching. Um, in, I think in, in each piece, in each track, you feel that there's a real strong passion behind it. Thank you very much. First, thank you. And now <laughs> it's your turn. Any questions just to Nemanja Radulovic? Yeah. We need the, the micro. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hello. I'd like to say that I love your new album. And thank I'd you like very to much. know if you will come back to Germany for solo concerts. 
Yes, but uh, I don't know by heart my the schedule. I'm so sorry. I think I, I will be here in May. Um, and then for sure uh, in October, I will play in Hanover and in Stuttgart also. And um, yeah, but I think you, you can find the old dates, uh, all concerts on, on the website, and that's it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I cannot be more precise. <laughs> Another question? Any more? No? Perfectly happy. <laughs> no more information. Well, if there's anything Thank else. You. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your interest. And, uh, well, give another warm farewell now to Nemanja Dudov. <laughs>